Hola, hola, ¿cómo estamos? How are you guys? Bueno, espero que estén muy bien. Buenas tardes, buenos días. Good afternoon, good morning. Where are you from, guys? ¿De dónde son? So my name is Julie. <coughs> Mi nombre es Julie. Soy tutora de español. I'm a Spanish tutor in Overcome the Barrier. Y hoy vamos a tener una clase de español. Ok. Wait. <coughs> Bien, vamos a esperar a que seamos algunos más, ok bien so today what we're going to see is a little bit of a grammar and vocabulary more vocabulary than another thing, ok entonces, the idea for us is to complete some sentences que podamos completar algunas oraciones, ok, to complete some sentences, so we can review our Spanish skills, ok, para que podamos repasar, sí, nuestro español. <coughs> ¿De dónde soy? Soy de Argentina, Buenos Aires, mi nombre es Juli, tengo 23 años, ¿cuántos años tienen ustedes? Entonces, en español no decimos I am 23 years old. We say I have 23 years. <coughs> so, in Spanish would be tengo 23 años. ¿Sí? Tengo 23 años. Good. Ok, soy 24 años. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. That in Spanish we say it's different. We don't say I am, we say I have. Tengo 23 o 24 años. We don't say soy. Because we don't use verb to be, we use verbo tener. ¿Sí? Verbo to be es en español. Verbo ser o verbo estar. ¿Sí? Hello, please. How, how do you recover your Spanish when you haven't put it to practice in a while? <clears throat> okay, that's a very good question. The, thing, the same thing happened to me uh, with English. I... Right now, I'm working as a Spanish tutor, right? And I have to speak a lot in English um, because most of the people speak in English. But I studied English when I was in kindergarten uh, in primary school. Right now, I'm 23 years old. I, I stopped studying English when I was in high school. Like, I had it in a subject, but it was not very good level so I didn't practice too much and I lost my well my my English like I did understand I did understand when I was hearing people talking or movies but I couldn't speak in language without like stopping and saying, um, 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 I'm thinking like, how do I say this? How do I say this? How do I say that? Um, so something that helped me a lot was starting to do these lives and the classes because they obligate me to speak in the language. So when you start practicing again, and you have like the obligation, like the people that travel abroad, they have the obligation to learn the new language because they have to 
make them understand um, so they can manage in the country. Um, so the same thing here, uh, if you want to, to recover your Spanish and not keep forgetting the language, I recommend you to practice speaking a lot. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes, um, that's normal. You're going to correct yourself. Um, I always invite you guys to take lessons with me or with another tutor from Overcome the Barrier um, so you can practice. There's a lot of guys, a lot of people that just want to learn Spanish from scratch or want to learn their basics or they are an intermediate, intermediate level and want to learn more and we also have a lot of people that are really advanced and they just want to practice so they don't forget the language. So I would recommend you to do that, like to practice speaking, because that's the thing that we lose very easily, like reading or writing or hearing, like listening, it's easier than speaking. So that's my recommendation. I invite you guys to have lessons with me. I'd love to have you as my students, but remember, you have to know that you have to practice. At the beginning, of course, it's going to be difficult. As I'm telling you, right now I'm speaking very fluent, I could say. Um, of course, my English is not perfect because I'm not, I'm not a native. I'm a Spanish native, raised and born in Argentina. Um, but of course, um, I just don't have to think so much when I speak in English right now. It's so hard for me to speak because my brain has to think how to say it exactly. Yeah, I know, because a lot of things you don't say it exactly the same. You have, I mean, if you translate them literally, it's not going to be okay. Like this easy example that I said before, I am 23 years old and in Spanish we say tengo, we don't say soy or estar. That's a very silly thing, but with other things, it just, they don't make sense at all. So it's like, hmm, what are you talking about? Um, but yeah, but it's practice. Because when you practice something, for you, it starts to be like more automatically, like more automatic. You don't have to think it so much. It's like when you start anything um, from scratch, like you're learning. Well, I'm a music teacher. A lot of people know this already. A lot of my viewers and my students, I'm a singer, I'm a music teacher in kindergarten and in primary school and high school. Um, and I also do, I also give private lessons, um, singing and piano lessons. Um, <clears throat> and what I always tell my students is that when you're practicing singing, for example, or piano, it doesn't matter, uh, your body is not used to doing that kind of movement. For example, when you play, play the piano, your fingers are not trained for that. So it's very difficult. But after a long time, of course, if you practice more, it's going to be best, okay? It's going to be better. <clears throat> but your body is going to make it more natural and automatic. Like you're going to make your body get used to that movement. The same thing happens with language. The only thing that is going to be trained is your, not your body, like your muscles and the, like the movements to know them by heart. If not your brain. I am new here. How did you learn English and how long did you study? Your English sounds great. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. That's very nice hearing because I'm a, not a native, so 
I would love you to speak Spanish as I do in English. Um, I learned English in kindergarten when I was since I was six years old, and I stopped when I was thirteen, more or less, because I went to a bilingual school. But then when I went to high school, I changed schools. Uh, it was not a bilingual school, so I did the Cambridge exams. Um, so in the test, in the exam, it says that I'm advanced. I don't know. Okay, so what do you think? ¿Qué les parece si empezamos con nuestra clase de español? Okay. So I'm going to speak very slowly. Voy a hablar lento para que podamos practicar la escucha. So we can practice also listening, okay? And understanding. Bien. Voy a poner a whiteboard like a like you know that I use, okay? And I'm going to write a sentence in English. Voy a escribir una oración en inglés. So let me go back. Wait a second. <clears throat> Meanwhile, you can tell me, mientras pueden contarme de dónde son. Where are you guys from? ¿Mm? ¿De dónde son? Ok, so, esta es la oración. This is the sentence, ok? <coughs> the cat sleeps on the bed. Ese es el ejemplo. Eh, Estados Unidos, where's, where? Which state? Los Ángeles. Jamaica, look at that, so interesting. ¿Puedes dar un ejemplo de la oración con el rapidez de un argentina? Yeah, of course. Um, for example, if I want to say, today I went to the shopping mall, um, I would say, hoy fui al, hoy fui al shopping. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. Um, okay, so let's do this. The cat sleeps on the bed. So what I care the most is for you to say, mm -mm -mm, duerme sobre. Mm -mm -mm. So we need to complete this sentence. Hay que completar. Esta oración, ¿cómo podemos completarla? Entonces, tenemos the cat, the bed. Eso es lo que hay que completar. Bien, entonces, la gata duerme sobre la cama. Very good. So that's in the case if we say that the cat is female, okay? It's a female cat, but it's perfect. And if not, we have el gato duerme sobre la cama. Okay, this was the easy one because it's the first one, okay? So el gato duerme sobre la cama. Bien. Okay? El gato duerme sobre la cama. Duerme, ¿qué tiempo verbal es? What time tense is duerme? ¿Qué tiempo verbal es duerme? ¿Mm? Presente. Very okay, good. And how do I say the verb in the infinitive? To sleep. 
in the infinitive. Dormir. Muy bien. Entonces, el verbo dormir es un verbo regular o irregular. Verbo regular o irregular. ¿Qué piensan? Irregular. Muy bien. Por eso decimos duerme. No, we are using a U when we don't have a U in the infinitive. Great. On, sobre, ok? Great. We're going to make it different now. And the sentence is going to be this one. So, the gorilla lives in the jungle. Ok? Okay, so we have to complete the gorilla and the jungle. Mm? So the gorilla lives in the jungle. Tiempo es masculino. Tiempo es masculine. So you want to say el favorito. But remember that the adjective goes after the noun. Okay? Actually, we say um, moment. We don't say tiempo. We say mi momento favorito del día. That would be the correct. Like this, I'm going to write it in the comments. Bien. Entonces, the gorilla lives in the jungle. So we need to say the jungle and the gorilla. How do you think, como piensan que podemos decir gorilla? Hmm? Gorilla. How do we say gorilla in Spanish? I just said it though. <laughs> it was not on purpose, but I said it. It's almost the same. How do we spell it? So we say gorilla. Gorilla is gorilla, but how do we spell it? It's not written the same way. No se escribe igual. ¿Cómo lo escribimos? Bien, gorila. ¿Sí? Con una L, with one L. ¿Ok? So, because if we have two L's, it's not going to be pronounced as la. It's going to be pronounced like ya or sha for me that I'm an Argentinian. Argentinians have a different pronunciation for the letter Y and the double L. Okay? It's a minimum. Gorilla, no. We say gorilla like this. Gorilla. Okay? Bien. So now we need the article. Necesitamos el artículo. Right? So how do I say the gorilla? The gorilla vive en... Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. ¿Cómo vamos a decir the? El artículo. Bien, el gorila. Because gorila... Although it ends with an A, it's a masculine word. I know, it's confusing. But not every noun that ends with an A is feminine. Usually it is, generally. So if you don't know, my logic sería pensar que sí. But in this case, it's not like that. It's masculine. 
Sorry to disappoint you guys. So we're going to say, El gorila vive en the jungle. The jungle? So someone said bosque. Bosque is woods or forest. But the jungle is another thing. So it's not forest, it's not bosque. Is no bosque is woods or forest. La selva. Very good, Lao. I'm my student. My my baby. Okay, so we can say la selva or we can say la jungla. It's a synonym, it's exactly the same thing. Maybe you remember it because it's very similar, like jungle. It could be la jungla. Oh, there's an N missing. La jungla, okay. Or la selva. It's exactly the same. It's just... A synonym, both of them are feminine. I want you to be able to see the sentence. Can you see it completely? Yeah. Entonces, la selva or la jungla. Both of the op options are 10 points. Están perfectos. ¿Sí? Bien. Buenísimo. Ok. Bueno, entonces, let's go with... The next sentence, ¿sí? Vayamos con la oración siguiente. Ok. So, now we're going to complete it like this. This is the sentence. Wait a second. So, the worm crawls on the ground my worm the worm sorry crawls on the ground okay so this is what we have to complete the worm and the ground. Maybe this is a little bit uh, more difficult. Team. Bien, entonces. The warm. How do we say warm? Remember it's singular. It's not plural, okay? Bien, gusano. Great, gusano. I didn't thought, I didn't think that you were going to know that. You impressed me, guys. You really impressed me. Okay, vamos a decir el gusano, entonces. El gusano, and if it were worms, gusanos, right? Plural. Entonces, el gusano se arrastra por la tierra. Yeah, it could be. Actually, ground, it's not tierra. It does make sense. But that's not what I'm saying. No, jardín no. The floor, the ground. El suelo, el piso. Muy bien. Ok. Entonces, we're going to decir por el suelo or piso. Ok. El gusano se arrastra por el piso. Piso without the accent. If you say 
pisó with the accent is that he stepped on something. Like he stepped, um, I don't know. Um, oh, okay, you're autocorrector. Yeah, piso. See? Entonces, suelo o piso. Muy bien. I would like you to try to pronounce it in your own houses. El gusano se arrastra, arrastra por el suelo. ¿Sí? El gusano se arrastra por el suelo. Muy bien. Very good. Great. Bien. ¿Qué piensan? What do you think if we go with the next sentence? ¿Ok? What do you think if we go with the next sentence? It is gringa. No, I'm not from United States. I'm an Argentinian and we're having a Spanish lesson. The only thing is that I'm teaching Spanish, speaking a little bit in English because that way we can understand each other better, okay? Because we all, you are not, well, I don't know who and who is not, but uh, you have different levels, okay? Some are more beginners than others. So I don't want to say things that you don't understand, so I'm always saying the things also in English. Okay? Bien. Bien. Okay. Entonces, vamos con la siguiente oración. Ay, gracias. Gracias. Me, me pone muy feliz cuando me dicen eso porque no es mi idioma natal. Así que mismo jamás fui a Estados Unidos, así que se imaginarán um, que no. I'm raised and born in Argentina. ¿Sí? I'm the champion of the World Cup, guys. <laughs> Not from United States. No soy gringa. Bien. So the next sentence is going to be this one. And we're going to say the penguin, the penguin swims in the cold water. So the penguin swims in the cold water. Okay? Esa es la oración. Entonces, vamos a poner y vamos a decir... Let me put it. Okay. That's what you have to complete. So the penguin, the penguin swims in the cold water. Okay. How do we translate that? El pingüino nada man, en el agua fría. El pingüino nada en agua fría. Okay, en agua fría is very good, but it's not the actual sentence. If I say the penguin swims in cold water, then yeah, it would be en agua fría. But I'm saying in the cold water, so en el agua fría. Very good. So we say el agua, right? We all know that. Do you know why we say el agua? Or you just know that it is like that? Oh, my neck hurts. Sorry, I have to, to sound myself, to make my, my body crack. I'm just too old, guys. Estoy muy vieja. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Nouns that start with A are too difficult to say with LA. Exactly. So, in Spanish, we don't like the two vowels together, like LA, uh, but it only happens with the nouns. Although, there are some exceptions. 
like for example, uh, if you say the pillow, pillow in Spanish, I don't know if you know this, it's almohada. You can also say cojín, but almohada it's another option. And in that case, we just say la almohada. Don't ask me why, because there is not a reason for that, it's just an exception. Uh, but I get confused when the adjective should be masculine or feminine. The adjective is always, always, always uh, depending the gender of the noun. If the noun is feminine, the adjective is feminine. If the noun is masculine, the adjective is masculine. For example, we have, I'm going to write the sentence so you can see it. You have el agua fría, right? We have el agua fría. Why do I care about this part? Fría es un adjetivo femenino. If agua is masculino, it's not the case, but let's suppose it is. Like for example, el suelo. That's masculine. I'm going to say el suelo frío. No voy a decir fría, porque el suelo es masculino. El agua, although you say el, it's feminine. So that's when... I'm going to put the stereotype colors I'm a feminist, but it's easier for you to understand it and see it. Um, so you can see. Las aguas, you don't have the problem exactly because you have the S in the middle. So in that case, you use the feminine article exactly. Okay? So even when we change the article, the gender never changes. No, the gender is always the same, okay? A word, a noun is feminine or masculine. That's it. The article, the only exception is that we use the masculine article when the noun starts with an A. Because in Spanish, we don't like the two vowels together. Same. ¿Por qué hay puntos encima de la letra U en pingüino? ¿Y cómo se llaman los puntos? Uf, that's a very good question. In Spanish, we have, and in German also, we have something that it's called diéresis. Diéresis. Eso es los dos puntos, the two dots that we put over the U. When do we put it? Because when do we put it? We put it when we want a specific pronunciation. The use of the letter G, it's very confusing because it's always pronounced differently. It is not the same when we say G plus A than when we say G plus E or G plus I. I really don't want to focus on this right now um, because that's something that I like I like doing in my classes but if I can hear you you know um, so the only thing is that when you put the U with two dots you're going to pronounce the U if you don't have the two dots over the U in this case it would, sound, it would sound like this, pinguino. And I want to say pinguino. Nada, depende la situación. Eh, suelo and agua has the same meaning. No, no, not at all. Suelo is ground or floor. Agua is water. What I'm explaining is the feminine and masculine adjective, okay? But no, 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 they don't mean the same at all. Okay? 
great. Um, tips on how to think in Spanish. Learn Spanish. Um, would you please write the name of... Okay, Vieres is like this. Vieresis, okay. In Spanish, we only use it over the U, but for example, in German, you use it over the O sometimes, and if I'm not mistaken, over the E, I, I'm not sure. Over the O, I'm for sure it's it's. I know it. <laughs> um, I think in English we call it umlaut. Um, um, umlaut. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how it is called in, in English now. No, ni idea. Um, how can you read write the Spanish words? Spanish is very easy with the pronunciation uh, because you have specific rules and they don't change. In English, you don't have rules in pronunciation. Um, so the only thing you have to do is learn how to say each letter and the sound it makes. But it's, it's very simple when you remember them um, because they don't change. They're always the same. For example, in English, your vowels don't have, don't make sense, guys. Please. Okay. Bueno. Vamos con la oración siguiente. Sí. La, pronun la pronunciation de las palabras en inglés me da miedo. Yeah, they don't make sense. It's like... What? Okay. Pronunciación. Bien. De acuerdo. Ok, very good. So the next sentence is like this. Ok. Um, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Bien. I have to pay the restaurant bill okay i have to pay the restaurant bill so tengo que mm, 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 la cuenta del mm, mm, mm. this one is very simple guys okay this one is really easy Bien, tengo que pagar. So, to pay is pagar. Ok. This is important for you to know it. Sí, es, es importante que lo sepan. It's very important for you to know this. Good. Entonces, tengo que pagar la cuenta del restaurante. Why do we say del? ¿Por qué decimos del? ¿Qué significa? What does that mean? What is that? It's not de. Why do we say del? Of the. De el. Okay. So when we have de plus el, we say del. Right? And when it's feminine, If it's feminine, how do I say it? ¿Cómo lo digo si es femenino? Hay que usar el artículo femenino. ¿Mm? 
Adela. Very good. Okay. So the same thing happens here. In Spanish, we don't like two vowels together. So we just unify them. Okay. Las unificamos. Si la o, ahí por ejemplo, tenés el ejemplo de unificar. ¿Te acordás? Hacemos dos palabras y unificamos en una. Entonces, dos cosas se vuelven una unificar. Que el otro día no se nos ocurría un ejemplo. Justo vi esto y lo tenía que decir. Perdón, that was a, a comment from one of my students. Uh, and we say del agua. Yeah, del agua. Exactly. Totally. Ok, bien. Lol, sí, mi ejemplo no se funcionó el otro día. Claro, por eso, justo, justo vi eso y dije, Lau. <ríe> ok. Bien, ok, let's go with the next one and let's make it a little bit more difficult. Hagámosla un poco más difícil, sí, porque that was really easy for you guys. I'm sorry. So that, this is a sentence we're going to do right now, and it says like this. Oh. So, I'm going, I'm going to load the car with the groceries. Okay, so I'm going to load the car with the groceries. So this one it's not so easy, right? So, I need to complete to load the car and the groceries. I just told them, I just told you that groceries is feminine, okay? So, ya tienen esa ayuda. Ahora, ¿cómo vamos a decir to load? It's not a verb so common, it's not a common verb, at least when you learn Spanish. Entonces, The car, I think that you know, right? Quiero pensar que saben decir the car. ¿Cómo vamos a decir the car? Tienen muchas opciones, ¿ok? Tienen muchas opciones. ¿Cómo vamos a decir the car? El coche, ¿ok? El coche es one option, es una opción. ¿Qué más? El carro, bien. ¿Algo más? ¿Alguna otra opción? Ya me voy, ya me voy is I'm living. El auto, bien. O el automóvil. Sí, entonces tenemos el carro, el coche, el auto, el automóvil. ¿Sí? Ok, voy a poner... That's I'm going to put. I'm going to put the load. No. I'm going to load the car. Bien, cargar. Cargar es el verbo we are searching for. Es el verbo que estamos buscando. Entonces, to load en español es cargar. ¿Sí? Voy a cargar. The car. So, voy a cargar el carro. Ok. I'm going to say carro because most of you said carro. So, voy a cargar el carro con las what? Con las qué? Con 
¿Cómo se dice groceries? No sé. ¿Cómo se dice groceries? Compras. Bien. Perfecto. Compras. Entonces, compras es femenino. ¿Sí? Con las compras. Entonces, la oración quedaría así. Voy a cargar el carro. ¿Sí? Con las compras. Voy a cargar el cargo, el carro con las compras. ¿Sí? ¿Era muy difícil? ¿Fue muy difícil? No. No fue muy difícil. Está muy bien. You're doing great, guys. Lo están haciendo muy, muy bien. Ok. Sí, purchases también, compras. Exactly. Bien. Ok. Mm, ok, now we're going to do other one. It's easier, ok. Well, I think it's easier. <laughs> Entonces, this is the sentence. The twins are identical. This is what you have to complete. The twins are identical. Hay otras palabras para decir groceries. Yeah, I think, I don't remember right now, but the most common one is compras. Ok, mechizos. I don't know if in English you say it exactly the same. Twins in Spanish is not mechizos. Actually, I don't know how to say mechizos in English. I think that you say it exactly the same way. Yeah, you do. Oh, you say it exactly the same. Well, in Spanish, we have a differentiation between gemelo and um, mechizo. For us, twin, that you can say For us, gemelo, it's when they're exactly the same, like they seem exactly the same. They are mechizos when they don't look the same. They are similar, they were born the same day and all that, but they don't look the same. That's why. I didn't know that you say it exactly the same way. Look at that. I just learned something. So we're going to say gemelos. Bien. Entonces, los gemelos. Sí. Los gemelos son idénticos. Los gemelos son idénticos. Ok. Porque they are exactly the same. Nunca he dicho mellizos en inglés. Yeah, I don't know. But in. in Google Translator says twins. So we're going to trust. <laughs> Bien. Alguna duda? Any further question that you have about uh, the sentences or a word or a grammar or anything? Any further questions? Ah, we say fraternal twins when they are not identical. Okay. Okay. And twins when they're when they are identical. 
friends, like only that. Solo eso. Si no. Bueno. Identical twins. Ah, bueno. <laughs> ok. Ok, ok. <laughs> Gracias. Um, bueno, alguna duda, alguna pregunta de algo que no haya quedado claro. Hicimos como unos ejercicios, ¿no? Para ver qué es lo que sabían, qué es lo que no. Pero no es que vimos un tema en particular. En general, cuando uno hace los vivos, es muy difícil tener un, un tema en particular. Eh, porque, bueno, porque no los puedo tener conmigo, no los escucho, no los veo. Eh, entonces, bueno, me parece que así es un poco más dinámico, more dynamic. How often are you live? Uh, I'm doing another live today. Well, this hour, it is hour 12 p.m. Because um, that's when I started this live, 12 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I'm going to do it every day of the week, except on Friday that it's going to be 1 p.m. But I'm also doing another live today at half five, half past half. I never know how to say the yeah, hour in English. Five half past half, five past half. I don't know, cinco y media. <laughs> at this hour, <laughs> I'm going to do another live. Okay. <laughs> Easier. Half past five. Okay. Thank you, my God. I have problems with that always. Um, no, any Instagram. On Instagram. I'm going to do lives on TikTok at 12 p.m. Eastern Time every day and on Friday 1 p.m. And today at half past five on Instagram. One on TikTok and another one on Instagram, and uh, like that. Every day. Okay? Bueno. I'm going to show you something, guys, before I leave. Okay? So, as you know, I'm a Spanish tutor from OCTV. Eh, soy tutora de español en Overcome the Barrier. So, I invite you guys that if you're interested in learning Spanish or improving or practicing so you don't forget the language mm, beso lao si te veo hoy um, I invite you to book a lesson with me to try to feel if you feel comfortable um, I think one of the most important parts of being a student is to feel motivated and comfortable with the tutor or the teacher you're learning whatever is Whatever you're learning, okay? Um, so I invite you to book a lesson with me. Or if you're interested on booking a lesson with another tutor, um, you do it exactly the same way. I'm going to show you how right now, okay? So if you want to book a lesson, the only thing you have to do is visit our website, okay? The Overcome Barrier website. Uh, there you can see all the different tutors. You can see also the, the times, uh, the schedule of every tutor, so you can choose and decide which date and at what hour you want to have your class, because that's how it works. You always decide the time, the hour, everything, um, depending the availability of the tutor, okay? But if you find a schedule that fits you, then you book it and that's it and it's yours. Um, so the only thing you have to do is visit our website, you can find it here in our TikTok, okay? If you visit our TikTok um, profile, you can see that we post content almost every day for you to learn more Spanish, okay? So I invite you to follow us, but also you have here a link, I don't know if you can see it, That it says try that lctv dot us. 
right? So you click there and it will drive you to our website. Okay, so in our website, you can find more information about our classes. Here explains that every tutor is a native speaker. So each tutor is from a different part, a different country from Latin America. For example, I'm an Argentinian, soy Argentina. Um, todos los tutores saben hablar inglés. Every tutor speaks in English. We all know English. It's our second language. So don't worry about that. Okay, we won't have problems with communication. Um, so you have a one-on-one -on -one class with a native speaker. Um, de forma virtual, ¿no? O sea, por una llamada de Google Meet. Okay. So you decide when... So here it says convenience and flexibility, okay? And the class, the first class costs $3. After that, it's a little bit more expensive, but um, you can feel free uh, to decide if you want to continue or not, okay? So if you want to book a lesson, you just book, you just click uh, book a 30 minute demo and here you will see a list with different tutors. Okay, you'll see a big list. Oh, sorry. With different tutors and a little description about ourselves. Okay, so for example, you have Camila that it's from Colombia, okay? You have Diego from Argentina, Angela for Colombia, okay? Abigail from Peru. This is me, for example, if you want to book a lesson with me. My name is Julie, nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm the only one who is ginger, so it's going to be easy to find me. But if not, you have a lot of different tutors. Andrea is one of the others that make lives also. So if you want to book a lesson, the only thing you have to do is just click on the, on the part that says book a lesson. You click there and you will see a calendar with the availability, in this case, of Maria. Okay, so you can see her availability. You just choose the day that best suits you. Well, she only has that hour available. Maybe a lot of people have booked that day, so she has no more options. But for example, if you go with me, well, I think I have almost everything booked also. So if I were you, I will be going and booking a class right now. <laughs> um, okay. Good. Well, I think that's it. Do you have any questions? Um, anything you want to ask? Um, whatever. Alguien, alguien quiere preguntar algo, consultar, um, lo que necesiten. No. Bueno, los invito a seguirnos eh, y que si necesitan eh, probar, oh, you can book a lesson, okay? I hope I see you in one of my classes. And, okay, remember, I'm going to do another live at half past five <laughs> on TikTok, eh, sorry, on Instagram, okay? Les mando un beso grande y que estén... Muy bien, gracias por haber visto el vivo, eh, por haberme escuchado una hora, les agradezco. Eh, y mañana, tomorrow, I'll, do, I'll be doing another live here on TikTok also at the same hour, ¿ok? Bueno, espero verlos y les mando un saludo muy, muy grande.